I think I'm home, Anthony, but I'm not sure. I'm confused. Napoleon's brother went to Framingham State University. Napoleon's brother? I thought it was his mother-in-law. I'm Anthony. Welcome to No Vacancy Lives. That's my friend Glenn. You're watching the number one show in hospitality. Everybody, welcome to No Vacancy Live. I'm Glenn Hausman. That's Anthony Melchiori. And be sure to remember to floss every day. How are you, Anthony? So, uh, <laughs> the, uh, so yeah, I was at Framingham uh, State University yeah. yesterday and talked to a wonderful class mm -hmm. uh, and uh, hospitality class yeah, and cool. got really beautiful notes from them. But I was doing some reading on the history of the university, and Napoleon's brother went there, and I thought that was pretty cool. I, I, I thought like you were half joking, but then I thought about it, and I'm trying to think about the years, and I guess it did. It did. It opened in 1856. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty cool. That's really. Uh, that's really awesome. What you got to talk about? Just um, my favorite subject, me. <laughs> um, no, no. We 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 talked about. Um, the reason I do what I do is to get yeah. kids like that into the industry and um, just, they, it was Q and A. So it was more like mm -hmm. ask me questions and I'll answer them. And I was very honest, transparent. And um, one person literally just sent me a text message saying, I didn't know if the hospitality industry was right for me, but after speaking to you, I'm going to give it a shot. So oh, that is the listen, best Anthony. We, yeah. We should all be doing what we can to get these young minds. And I will tell you something yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think is really important. Mm -hmm. I walked in mm -hmm. and when I walked into the class, it's not like, and I'm sure Suzanne, our producer deals with this every day. It's not like when you and I walk into class, right? right. You walk into class, you square up, you sit, you pay attention. At least you make them believe you're paying attention. That's right. I'm very good at that. I learned right. how to sleep with my eyes open. Right. Well, this thing, you know, some kids came in, did that. Some kids kind of slithered in and, mm -hmm. and, but they were all kind of like, you know, like kind of how people show up today. Thank but within you. a few minutes, everybody was engaged. Everybody was asking questions. Everybody was wonderful. You know, everybody's fear of, of not doing well. And yeah. it was just wonderful. It was a great class. Yay. That is really wonderful. I love it. And a big thanks to the good folks over at Rain's Company for having me uh, at their event this week in Asheville, North Carolina, a city I've never got to visit before, but one I hope to return to again. Oh, such a great little uh, that's the that's the, oh, that's the capital of furniture. Uh, yes, I did not get to see uh, any uh, new furniture, just uh, furniture that had already been uh, purchased. But maybe on my next trip, I'll do a big furniture factory tour. Uh, that would be an exciting point of your life, I'm sure. All right, so one place that I haven't been to, uh, Anthony, but you know I love working with those uh, folks over at Pizzeria Uno's, founded in Chicago. So we're going to go back to uh, Chicago uh, today. We're going to speak with someone I've never had the chance to speak to or even meet to before. And I'm talking about Sandy Robinson. She is the D-O-S-M at the Godfrey Hotel, Chicago. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, you for having me. Hi, guys. Hi. Thanks so much. So what's life in Chicago like for you these days? Are you uh, panicking about the, the fall weather turning to cold? Oh, no, no. We don't panic in Chicago. We just go with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we, we experience a couple of seasons in one day. And, you know, yeah. it is what it is here. <laughs> awesome. It's all the people that fly into Chicago and go, it's cold. It's like, well, it's Chicago in the winter and we're in fall. I was driving up to Boston the last couple of days and I got out to get gas and I was in shorts and a hoodie and it was cold. <laughs> like Boston let me know immediately you're not in New York anymore. It was cold. <laughs> yeah, I have I to ask people, what, what, what is your level of cold? You know, because if it's uh, 50 degrees, you know, that's still yeah. sandal weather for us oh, here. Well, well, uh, well, I live in a beach community, so we're wearing, okay. um, we're wearing sandals and hoodies until November. I have my pool open until November. So uh, I love li uh, sleeping in ice hotels in Sweden. So you, I can't get enough cold. I just made like I, but I wasn't like okay, you know, I'm a little hot in my hoodie when I got in the car, and I got out and was like, oh, I'm glad I have my hoodie on. <laughs> that makes sense. Well, that makes I'll tell sense. you, I'll tell you, Sandy, over there in, uh, in Chicago, it looks like you're ready for all the seasons based on the image I have with me. And it looks like uh, for those on the audio feed that are listening to this, it's a great uh, rooftop cocktail lounge, which I guess is kind of a 
very much what a lot of boutique hotels these days are doing. But Sandy, we have you here to talk about how booking trends are changing, how you can maximize opportunity and all of that kind of good stuff. But before we get into that, why don't you set us up a little bit? Tell us a little bit about the Godfrey Hotel uh, Chicago and what makes it special to you. Absolutely. Well, so the Godfrey Hotel Chicago opened 10 years ago, February 1st of next year will be our mm -hmm. 10 year anniversary. Ooh, fun. Um, and so we were at the forefront of rooftops, you know, it was before everyone decided to to open something. And at the, these days, everyone has a rooftop. Um, yep. And so we have been one of the largest indoor outdoor rooftops in the city of Chicago. Um, and it's very cool. It's very cool. We have a wonderful hotel, 221 guest rooms. We're right on LaSalle Street. So we are a direct uh, connection into the, the Loop area. Uh, we're right in River North. So you are surrounded with restaurants and bars and just all the fun attractions that can that you can easily access um, when you come into the city of Chicago. Um, it has just been an amazing journey, amazing ride. And um, Anthony, you said you were just in Boston. We have a Godfrey in Boston. Um, and we are just, you know, at the forefront of, of everything Godfrey. We are happy to be the first Godfrey. Um, and since then, we've opened Chicago, we've opened Boston, we've opened Hollywood, uh, and recently in Detroit. Yeah. Anthony, you're muted. <laughs> uh, and if Glenn, if Glenn stands in the right way around the logo, it says the God. Which is, oh, yeah. proper, which is his proper. <laughs> I'll just stand right there. <laughs> I, 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 I like that. I love it. <laughs> which he calls himself, which is kind of <laughs> so well, where, okay. Uh, where, okay, so we're here. Uh, wait, hold on. Here. To be fair, that's not what I call myself. It's just what I make other people call me, Sandy. He's really that is true. That is true. So that is very it's a true. difference. So, it's a difference. So <laughs> with, with, you know, groups coming back in urban markets, yeah. um, how much are they coming back? I know in Vegas, they're back, you know, they're better than ever. But where are they in reference to Boston, Chicago? And is it more social group or is it more corporate group? The group's bigger, the smaller. How far out? What are the terms? Are they worse? So what's your life like? Whew, that's a whole lot. <laughs> That's, that's exactly how my life is. It's a whole lot. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> groups are coming back. They definitely yeah. are coming back. Um, the sizes of groups are definitely different. Um, mm -hmm. We are seeing a lot of smaller groups. We're seeing a lot of groups that, you know, used to have office space and now they don't. And now they're just trying to figure out how they're going to get everyone together. Um, you know, last year it was more so, you know, exactly what we're doing was a lot of virtual meetings. Um, mm -hmm. And now it's a lot of hybrid meetings, but mainly they're wanting really to get people to come together. Um, so in our size property, 221 guest rooms, um, 15,000 square feet of meeting and event space. Um, the space that you're, that you're, that you have in your wonderful background, Glenn, we do mm -hmm. get creative and we can do meetings in there. So cool. we can put round tables in there. We have great virtual, um, virtual audio visual that we can add to the space. Um, so it's it's getting creative with what we have and being able to accommodate the groups that are that are interested. Um, the size can be anywhere from a six person, you know, a six person executive meeting where people mm -hmm. are staying here and they're like, oh, we're coming in next week. Oh, we need a meeting space for like two or three days to a 50 person meeting that's coming, you know, in the next 30 days. Right days that needs meeting space they may need guest rooms and guess what we may not get, get that rooming list until a week out which is just bizarre to me you know you, you think about people needing to book their travel right. and just you know that sense of urgency is just not really there like it used to be pre-pandemic um so it's really balancing and working with these planners um one by one and you know just just helping to, them to understand how our market is uh, it's, I see, i'm scratching my head over here literally and figuratively because uh I'm one of those people that need to plan their stuff in advance. I've got all my flights set for the rest of the year, Same. all my hotels set for the rest of the year. But this is following on industry trends. And it shows that these booking windows are getting shorter and shorter mm -hmm. and shorter um, for meetings. So you've got to respond and you've got to act completely differently and kind of relearn all of the habits and procedures that you started your career with, right? Well, we have to relearn and also reteach um, mm -hmm. because thinking about who the planner is now, they're just right. they're different from before. Um, so it's us really understanding that this is not someone that's used to planning meetings. This right. is someone that just, you know, they're they're they just happen to have to get the job or the meeting planner of that company is no longer there. And the company saw that, you know, during COVID, they said, OK, well, we can. Susie's been planning our meetings and she's been doing a good job, but Susie really does it 
understand the dynamic. She doesn't understand attrition. She doesn't understand, right. hey, you know, we only have a couple of meeting rooms because we are a boutique hotel. You're coming here for a reason. Right. Um, we only have a few meeting rooms and, you know, you're taking our largest meeting space, even if you're 40 people. Um, so it's really us teaching the planner how to do business. Right. And let's be and fair to Susie. She doesn't know what she doesn't know because she was exactly. put into that position. So Sandy, exactly. you have to be then much more of an advisor and kind of help them along throughout that whole process, which has got to eat up a lot more time, particularly if you're running so last minute. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. And understanding when you have a property, especially like a boutique property where, you know, we're, we're unique. I believe a lot of boutique properties, they don't have this, this large meeting any space. And, you right. know, when you have people, they don't realize like you're not just the only meeting that we have going on, you know, and then in the next 30 days, I have 40 pages of, of BEOs, you know, to go out, but probably 40% of those clients are, I have to explain to them a lot of things and it's, it becomes a very tedious process. It becomes right. a lot more, you know, tedious, you know, on, on my side, because I do, you know, we want, we want the business, we need the business, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but now I have to make sure that every client is getting, you know, the time and there, everything is an email because everything has to be bullet pointed out to them. Um, you know, it's more calls, it's more just walking people through the steps. And how much is AI uh, taking over in reference to, bidding out business. So if I have a big company, am I using AI to send you an email based on this is my requirements and boom, and like you're dealing everything just through technology or is it still very much a people person? Yeah, I don't think it's so. still very much a people person. Mm -hmm. it, for our size property, at least, it still is very much a people person. I would it's argue it's people. probably more people than ever before if you're dealing with all these new people that haven't booked people into uh, events filled with people, right? Exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, I have clients that have, that have been with us for, for literally until the pandemic and right. then they're coming back again this year and it's like, she's never planned a meeting before. And I said, I've literally worked with you for, you know, eight years doing this exact same program. But for some reason, COVID happened and everyone just kind of forgot how to how to plan a meeting and how to do business. So how class. do you <laughs> so how do you train your team who may not have a lot of experience because they may be new right. uh, to handle this? Because a lot of people will lose their patience or not understand that everybody's learning, man. And this is, you know, let's let's teach. And, you know, your job is not to just say yes to the client. Your job is to ensure the client looks good. And that's a very different mm. teaching uh, way. Like you just want to say yes to the client. The client may not be happy at the end of this. If you know how to teach your client what the client really wants, and I know that's hard for people that don't understand what we, what we deal with every day. Um, how has that been? Well, my module has never been the client is always right. That is that is absolutely not the case, you know. Right. And every every property does not fit every client. So it is it has been just making sure that my team understands that, making sure that there is open dialogue for each client because every client is different. Every single request is different. Um, you know, every Every email is just going to be different. So for me, right. it's having that open line of communication between myself and my sales manager and like literally talking through every situation. Now, Sandy, when you say the client and is having always, an extra bottle yeah, of wine, right? Yeah, that always helps. <laughs> now, when you say the client isn't always right, right? Uh, that doesn't mean that they're not right. They just may not know. They may not realize how something goes. And again, it goes back to you having to take that extra time to exactly. fully it's understand explaining. their needs and adapt a program to those needs. Exactly. Exactly. And, and fully understanding, mm -hmm. you know, we are, we are, we are limited. We do a lot of, we, and we go above and beyond right. for our clients all the time, but there are clients that just, they see our hotel, you know, and they think that certain things right. will just work and they will try and force it and they'll try and force it. And this is where you get into a situation where they're unhappy and you're unhappy because you're trying to make them happy. And it's like, it's okay. It's okay. And matter of fact, let me suggest another place that will make you happy and that will get you exactly what you need. And it's okay if it's not us. Um, but I've always been a big believer and you yeah. know, this is why industry contacts are important because you want to know where you can be comfortable and feel safe with sending your client because you know exactly you have had those conversations and you do understand their needs um, in order to point them in the right direction if that direction may not be yours. My least favorite quote is the client's always right. That's my least favorite quote. What I say is, the client always isn't always right, but they have to make, they have to, we have to make them feel like they're right. Yes. So what is, so if you do it right, you can be completely on the other side of what they initially asked for. 
And at the end of the contract, they think it was their idea. If you're really good. <laughs> correct. Right? Correct. Yes, and, absolutely. And so, so you have to, they're not always right. You have to make them feel like they're right. And that's just by, you know, at the end, you know, they win. You know, it's like you, Glenn. You're never right, but I always make you feel like you're right. <laughs> hey, and as long as I feel good at the end of the day, that's all that really matters, right? You know, as long as I call you God every day, you're good. Um, but, but, but it's so. How long have you been in this business? Anthony, every time you touch your microphone, it makes horrible crackling noises. How long have you been in this business? Uh, 26 years. Wow. 26 years. Okay. Tell me about the person you trained 26 years ago. And tell me about the person you trained today. What's the difference? Well, 26 years ago, I was the one being trained. (laughs) And I had a remarkable trainer. (laughs) I'm talking about your 20, you know, whatever year. Um, That person training then to now is, honestly, my values have not been, have not really changed. My my training structure has not really changed, which is why I have had clients um, for the amount of time that I've had them. Mm -hmm. um, Because I have believed that, um, you know, you have to understand what the client is asking for. And you have to understand that you can't make everything fit. Um, You can't make everything fit into your space just because you have a great space. You know, it really takes having those conversations and understanding. And I have always understood that because I've had some great mentors throughout the years and I've had great people um, that have instilled that in me. Um, So it's been my training module throughout the entire duration, you know, understanding the client's needs, anticipating um, the client's expectations. And at the end of the day, whether it's an event or they're just sitting rooms here, I want the client to look good. I tell clients all the time, I don't want you to come to my retractable rooftop and my venue and you work crazy because that's what you're used to doing in venues. I want you to enjoy the party just like everyone else. And that's what you should be doing, you know, but we need to have those conversations so that I understand exactly what it is that you need. And I can provide those things that you need where maybe another venue may not have. Um, But back to answering your question, like it's been the same. It's been training. It's been having that open dialogue. It's understanding your market. It's having those relationships in the hospitality community. It's so important to know, you know, your, your counterparts in this community. Um, It has, it's, it's not necessarily about competition. It is, but it's friendly competition. Correct. Um, I've spoken with a lot of young kids that kind of, they come into this thinking that, Oh, because this venue is our competition. Don't talk to them. Don't do anything. Well, no, because how are you going to know what's going on in your market, in your industry, if you're not having these conversations, if you're not having these people that you have befriended and you feel confident enough to send your clients to my clients, they're my clients because for a reason, you know, I can send them somewhere and they'll come back to me because they appreciate it that I put them in the hands of someone that cares equally, you know, the way that I do about them. Right. Totally. And one of the things I mistakes that young people make when they try to block out those other things, because they think they're doing the right thing. But I think it really comes from a place where they just don't know. They need to be more confident in themselves. And when you're confident with yourself, with your skill level and as a professional, then you're more open to sharing and being collaborative because you don't feel threatened. Right, exactly. Sandy? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's just so important in this industry, especially for the kids coming in because they just, they don't, they think that, Oh, it's, you know, everything's is, is a fight for, you know, you have to, you have to beat the next person and you really don't, you need to have befriend that person and understand their module just the way that they understand yours. Yeah. And how much revenue management, are, like how close are you in the revenue management team? Are you guys constantly working together and and how much different is it than it used to be? As she takes oh. a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. We we work very close. So we're always on IM. Um, our revenue manager uh, manages our property and another property. So mm-hmm. um, she's on site and you know, we're having those meetings. We are, you know, whenever we're receiving citywide leads, like we're we're in constant contact. Um, but also our revenue manager allows uh, myself and my team to um, to have the leeway to, to be able to quote so that we don't have to wait, you know, a full day to get back to people because this is the business of, you know, speed exactly. and efficiency. Um, so we are, we're, we're on the same page when it comes to, to quoting rates. Um, and if anything, if there's a question, um, you know, our team is always available and, you know, that that's the great thing, you know, having a core team that, you know, you can really connect with, communicate with, and you, you understand, Hey, if I'm sending something to you, I, I need a, a pretty quick turnaround because my client needs a pretty quick turnaround. I remember we used to get a lot of business when I was running hotels in the city, simply because we would get calls from, I won't mention the names, but big hotels in Midtown saying, you know, we called them this morning and they haven't responded. 
And I always told my team, it's like, if you're not there, if you're at lunch, fine. I don't want you to be interrupted, but then give them my cell number. Give them my number, like, on your answering machine. So everybody, because that's when we have answering machines. That, that's, like, there's th three minutes. You got to get back to everybody. Because in New York City, there's a lot of leads coming in. And you can pick those leads up easily if you're yeah. just efficient. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, 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 again, another, like you were saying, like, having that team together. Because I am sure you've had disagreements with your revenue manager where you want a piece of business that you know is good long term oh, yeah. and for some reason they're like this is the rate this is the p l this is what we have to hit and if you're not a team and you don't understand each other's strengths and weaknesses and what you really need to do for the long-term good of the hotel those could be really bad disagreements exactly yeah, to say the least <laughs> To say the least. I'm being but, nice, yeah, Anthony. I'm being nice. <laughs> you are, Anthony. <laughs> You've been in hotels, so you, I, I, I understand. I'm reading through the, uh, through the cracks there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say it's, it's really Anthony makes a great point because you have to respond to those calls because as booking windows continue to shrink and shrink, that individual is under a lot of pressure to get that meeting booked and yeah. move forward as quickly as possible. So they're not going to be sitting around for yeah, a while but, and waiting but, for people to get back. You have to understand, Glenn is yeah. what happens. I won't speak for Sandy, but I'll just say, yeah. okay, yeah. there's a group that all of a sudden we get and they need an instant turnaround and yeah. the rate on the book that everybody agreed to is, for lack of a better word, say $200. And we're going to bring this this back in for, say, 175 that we didn't agree upon yet. Right. But it comes with food and beverage, okay? And we have, to, we have to quote that. And then it comes with maybe a couple of comps. It maybe it comes with this and that. So we've already made that decision. It's good for the, it, for the, bit, for the hotel. We're professionals. We know that's good for the hotel. But the revenue manager is like, well, that doesn't fit with what has been out there in what we've agreed to. You have to trust each other. It's like if you have to come to me and make that decision, then you and I don't trust each other. Right. Right. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. You know, we know our, we know our cat with rooms. We know where we need to be. We know, you know, what ADR needs to be. And, you know, we, we know every single day, you know, where we are, um, you know, for the month and the year. And, you know, we are just able to have that open line of communication. Um, if anything arises where we feel that, okay, we need to have another meeting or we need to send another, another email to revenue and have that conversation. Other than that, we are, we are enabled, we are allowed to, you know, quote what we need to do and, I, I, remember, I, I remember I walked into a meeting with our regional. They just bought the hotel, new management company. And uh, we were doing great in the hotel. And we turned it around. And they wanted X amount of FITs. And we said, no, we don't need that many FITs. And they were kind of being very nasty to my director of sales. And I asked the, the regional person to leave the hotel. <laughs> and, and wow. right, because I was just like, no, we're not doing that. And you're being rude, so you need to leave. It's You, you have to respect each other and understand what you know, what I know. And, yeah. and there's always, even when you do that, there's going to be differences. But everybody, you know, is fighting for the same cause. And the same cause is we want to come up good on Star Report. We want our owners to be happy. And we want to give as much money to our employees as we can in raises. So we need to make money for the ownership. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For sure. So, Sandy, I mean, you, you're you're out there. You're fighting for the good cause. You're making sure everybody gets paid. But in order to get people paid, you got to find that business. What are some strategies that you're em employing right now in order to be able to seek out, find, and book that business in your property? So we have a lot of... Um, obviously great business that has been with us before. So, mm -hmm. you know, the number one thing to do is reaching out to that repeat business, um, restarting those relationships, because again, the people that plan, you know, two years ago are, are mm -hmm. more than likely not with the company anymore. So yeah, right. just making sure that those relationships are there, um, doing events where we are doing, um, we're catering to meeting and event planners and having the people come out, um, coming out to see our, to see our, mm -hmm. you know, wonderful rooftop. Once people get there, they're like, Oh my God, it's amazing. Um, what can I do here? And so, so just making sure that we are staying, you know, in the forefront of everyone. Um, we work a lot with influencers um, that come to the hotel and, you know, they do an amazing job of, of, of showcasing the hotel. Um, and then, you know, at the end of the day, it just kind of boils down to old school cold calling, you know, picking up the phone and dial dialing for dollars, as we used to call it, dialing for dollars. So yeah, um, um, calling people and sending emails. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. Um, in all the years you've been doing this, have you ever thought about going into being a GM or in the operation or have you done that? I have done that. I have done that. I am not in, not on the GM side, but on the operation side. Um, and I am no longer, look, look, 
my, my, time, my time in this industry, I am no longer an operations girl. Not when it comes right. to, you know, no, not interested. I just want uh, like sales and that's it. So let me reverse it. Why do you love sales so much? And how does it make you happier as a professional? I love people. I love mm -hmm. people. I've always loved that satisfaction of people saying, thank you so much. You know, this was an amazing event. This was an amazing, we, our group had a great time at your hotel. Literally just got an email this morning. Our mm -hmm. group had a great time at your hotel. We love the food. Like I'm a people person, you know, yeah. I, operations are, you know, they're, they're different. Operations are different. I love operations. They're the ones, they are the truly the backbone, but sales are the ones that get the people here. They're the ones that have the, you know, the smiley faces. They're the ones that are having all these meetings with people. And, you know, I love conversations with people. Mm -hmm. I love, you know, leading them in the right direction. Um, it's just, it's been what I've done since I was, since I was 16 years old and cool. stays with me to, to this day. Uh, yeah. All right. So, uh, you've got all of these people coming and they're booking meetings. What are some of the common themes that people want out of these meetings? And how are you as a hotelier able to provide the basis for success? So basically what I'm saying is how are things changed? What do people want in, in the meeting itself? The biggest thing that's changed is audio visual, honestly. Yeah. You know, if you are not up to date with your audio visual in your mm -hmm. meeting space, um, you know, then you you have to get with it. We recently, I mean, we've been open for 10 years. We've had TVs and I don't even understand how those TVs are still <laughs> still turning on. Um, but we've had TVs for 10 years and we recently just got a, you know, a new renovation, mm -hmm. um, new audio visual. And right. It has um, it has the um, the technology to do video conferencing right on the TV. Um, so just making sure you're staying up to date with what's what's going on um, and making sure that you're able to provide that. And if you can't, you know, again, boutique hotels are a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, having an outside audiovisual company that can um, mm -hmm. can get you what you need. Um, I would say the biggest the biggest thing that has changed is just the uncertainty. You know, right. people still don't know. Um, oh, we may have sixty people. We may have forty people. And Again, there the sense of urgency to book and to 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 get your people, and I'm referring to my clients' people, um, to to confirm mm -hmm. if they're coming to a meeting that's in a week or two. It's just it's it's insane. So you know we end up just being a little bit more lenient than we were before, um, because just understanding the dynamic is that people have not booked their travel. People, you know, may have come down with COVID. Like these are things that we still have to be very well um, aware of and things that are definitely happening um, that did not happen before. Um, would you say, yeah. Sorry, Anthony, go I'm for sorry. it. Would you say every meeting is now hybrid? No, not, not in, not, in 2023 2022 yes i would say probably 20 percent of meetings now are hybrid um but there still is that audio visual component that people people have to prep for you know because we've had meetings that you know they have not been hybrid and then all of a sudden within 24 hours oh we have a bunch of people or maybe our ceo can't make it and you know it, having the option where before we never had that option it's like how do we how can we now make sure that everyone is included before where it's like you had to be here, you had to fly in. And now it's, oh, OK, well, let me just let me just dial in and, and log on from the comfort of my home or, you know, from an office because I just physically can't make it. I was I was in a meeting recently and I walked into the meeting room and I, I felt old because I was like, wow, I haven't been in a meeting room like this before. There were cameras everywhere. There was I was where's the mics? Where's the thing? They're like, just sit down. Somebody press play. And all of a sudden, everybody was fed in. Everything I heard, everybody I could like zoom in. There was graphics, there was whiteboards, and I was just like, "Wow!" Yeah, it truly is an adjustment. But this is this is where we are headed. I do not see us, you know, turning back the hands of time anytime soon. Um, we are moving forward with all this technology and whiteboards and Slack and Zoom and Google Meets and everything else in between. Now, we've talked a lot about business meetings, but there's still a huge wedding markets out there. And Sandy, I just saw the coolest thing. I won't mention the hotel because it's not fair to you, but they implemented projection mapping technology so they could change the look and feel of the room depending on the event or the wedding or the bar mitzvah or whatever occasion they're having. I think that's uh, one cool technology people are going to be looking at in the, uh, the future at this level. That is very cool. That is very cool. We are um, we are more of a, of a corporate um, property. 
And um, I mean, our coolness is right behind you in your background, Glenn, you know, with that yeah. roof being able to open and still being able to do an event for 600 people and, you know, and knowing that you can have it closed or you can have it open. And, you know, December, sometimes we have 50 degree weather and we open that rooftop. Right. I, I hear one thing not cool, though, is the fact that I'm here on Long Island and not in Chicago with you because September is so beautiful in Chicago. It makes you forget <laughs> it how is. horrible February can be. <laughs> it is. It is. I just flew out of uh, ISA the other day. It was Did you? Uh, lot, lots yeah. of rain there. <laughs> it's 10 minutes from my house. You should have called. We could have had lunch. I should have. Next time. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we didn't know each other then, but what are you gonna what, what are you gonna do? Wow, Sandy, you got an invitation, uh, and you you're in Chicago. I've never gotten an invitation to he's lying. Glenn Houseman, uh, what boat house, food house, barbecue house? I think Houseman Resort, pool club, smokehouse, uh, brewery, and dispensary. <laughs> oh, now dispensary. <laughs> so it's legal in New York now dispensary. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a new one. I like that. I like that. Uh, yeah, for, for sure. Uh, Sandy, I don't want to end on that note. I want to end on you. Um, give us, uh, give us a strategy or two that helps you remain uh, a professional that keeps moving forward in your career. Absolutely. Um, one of the things I do and I've always done um, is having a, you know, people are used to receiving an out of office responses. Mine is an in office response, right? Because people mm -hmm. always want that instant gratification. Mm -hmm. um, you know, earlier we were talking about how people have waited, you know, they wait and they wait and they wait. They send an email and they don't receive a response back. Um, right. So and then after three office, minutes, they really start to get angry. <laughs> they do. They really do. You know, yeah. but having some, it's something about just receiving something right away right. with information, just basic information. It just mm -hmm. says, calm down. I received your email. I <laughs> promise you, I will get back to you within 24 hours. And honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm usually quick. So it's usually within the next hour or so yeah. I respond to them, but having menus attached to it, you know, and being able mm -hmm. to just receive that um, really calms a lot of people down. Um, and then following up with that, that email, you know, and not having people filtering through your emails, you know, and seeing what's important. So it's a client that's looking to come in in a couple of days because this is just the reality of where we are. You know, you right. have clients that are looking for next year. You have right. clients that are looking for the next 10 days, your clients next 30 days. So filtering through those messages, even if you're not responding right away, at least you're able to look and just even sending them a quick message to say, hey, I received your message. I have a lot going on right now, but I promise I'll get back to you. Um, has been very, very helpful. Is there a lot um, going also, through text? Is there a lot going through text? Like, are you texting a lot of people? through um, your computer or is it mostly just email? Oh, it's, it's emails. It's all emails. So emails. And then we obviously we have um, on our website where people can send inquiries right. through there. Um, mm -hmm. So whenever I see inquiry, it's the exact same thing as if I received a direct email, I'm still filtering through it. Um, and then, you know, sending them an email, if it's something that's precedent or, you know, something of urgency, I'll still send them a follow up email and just let, let them know I got it calm down and I will get back to you um, as soon as possible. Um, and just making sure that you, you're, you're maintaining those relationships, you know, with your clients and making sure that they know that you're here for them, that you're, you know, you're able to help them and guide them through whatever it is that they need. Um, inviting them over to your property. You know, a lot of people have not physically been on property in so long. Yeah. Um, you know, if there's any new things going on, um, inviting them over just so that they can see and feel and touch and, you know, understand, um, mm -hmm. you know, what the space actually looks like what your hotel rooms actually look like and just having that that reminder um even you know extending if they have guests or friends or family coming in that you know mm -hmm. you'd love to be that hotel for them to just stay in and just again just making sure that you're staying top of mind for them because you know they have a lot going on they're reaching out to other people but you know if they if they have that constant communication with you then you will always be top of mind whenever they're looking to do something yeah uh excellent um anthony you have anything else for our, our no i'm good at, you know People like, you know, and you know this, Sandy, when yeah. you're in a market and you're a professional and you're really like everybody knows that if you're in the market, you better pay attention because Sandy will take your market share. You make yeah. you make the market better because you make people on their game and everybody becomes better. You being on top of your game doesn't take away from other people as long as they're on top of their game and you guys all feed off each other. But um, I'm sure when you come into a market or into a hotel, everybody in the competition goes, oh, all right, we got to we got to pay attention. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I'll also, uh, uh, Sandy, Mr. Card says you have a great attitude, and you've also got great energy. And when you oh, you cool. have that, people are going to respond to you so much better because you're here, you're present, and I can tell that you're ready to make sure people have a great experience at the Godfrey Chicago. Do us a favor. Oh, Give us a good plug on your hotel. You've earned it, Sandy. 
Thank you. <laughs> Godfrey Hotel Chicago, 221 guest rooms right on, on Huron and LaSalle, um, right in the hub of the city of Chicago with an amazing all year round retractable rooftop that yeah. can hold up to 700 guests. That's a small portion of it, but we can definitely accommodate up to 700 guests and wow. we'd love to have you here. That's incredible. Sandy, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And uh, Brilliant. thanks thank uh, you. thanks to your team for reaching out to have you on. This was absolutely uh, delightful. I appreciate you. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good one. Have a great day. You too. Yeah, bye bye. All right. So, uh, Anthony, that was great. But something else just happened that I'm very excited about. I think. Uh, I think Ed Bastian, the CEO of Delta, heard my rant, my rant the other day, and of course, those of millions of other crabby travelers. It looks like they're gonna change a little bit of course from um, treating us all like dollar signs. And yeah, but you know, it's really disappointing that there is there is so like Delta and the other airlines, they've never made so much money, all right? And they, they they've picked this opportunity to take advantage. It's, it's like I'm, I I don't think I'm ever gonna feel the same way about Delta because it's the yep. one company i always felt like they had my back yep. and by just completely because they didn't go half in they didn't go three quarters in they were just like you spend a lot of money and you will be treated like a vip you spend a little bit of money and fly a lot of miles you'll be treated like you never flew this airline before yeah it's ridiculous you know yeah All so right. yeah I, I thought that as soon as i saw it, i was like oh they heard glenn uh, yeah, for sure. All right. So, hey, be sure to uh, follow us. Look at that. We finally got the new graphic uh, going up. Follow us on Facebook, Insta, LinkedIn, YouTube, and of course, NoVacancyNews.com on the web. And go to AnthonyMilcury.com while you're at it. And while you're doing that, remember, you've got one life, so blaze on, and Be kind to yourself. All right. See y'all sometime soon. And why?